Hello there and welcome to another episode of A Four Times in a Podcast. This episode comes to you on Sunday the 17th of October. It's just over 24 hours since Celtic recorded a 2-0 victory at Fur Park against Motherwell. The goals yesterday came from Iota and David Tumble. That's now two away wins in a row. Another good performance, I think. Danny, I'll come to you straight away. It was first game back after the international break and... Oh, we'd won at Pataudry a few weeks ago, the away form was still questionable, but that's the sort of performance and result that will put they sort, that sort of talk to bed in the coming weeks if we keep that up. What was your thoughts on the game yesterday? Ah, uh, you're right about that, about the talk about who's not been able to win away and stuff. I thought yesterday was as good as a Saturday as it could have been, with results elsewhere, but in terms of just plainly Celtic, it was a professional win, we won, we won away from home with plenty to spare, I couldn't mind, certainly not happened this season, but... We, you know, it was a lot. It was funny because the Aberdeen game was all about just winning, like winning away from home, and it was great just to win away from home and stuff. It was great to win away from home and get that win and get that monkey off Angie's back where right, you can go away from home and but to go and play the way they did yesterday. Completely never got out of second gear, but looked dangerous every time we went forward. Players like I thought, I thought McGregor was was outstanding. I thought for start to finish he was the best player on the park by a mile. Kyogo quite quiet, but then you see you see his impact. You see his impact. In the first half, he wins the ball back, leading to the first goal. He runs about like a madman. I was watching Paul that does Celtic fan TV, and the guy that he was interviewing, he made the he made a great point about Hugo. He says when you see a guy like that running about like a maddie, you, you almost feel obliged to join in. And he and he does Kyogo, he leads by example and I thought yesterday's work rate's just phenomenal. His link up play was really good to our one. I think it was right at the end of the first half where he just did a lovely wee touch, Uri boy, and he played a good pass and it, it led to a, a, a breakaway. But Rogic was very good tumble. I thought he struggled. I thought he grew into the game a wee bit, scored a great goal in the second half. But it wasn't his finest performance. But the whole defence looked good. Staff felt looked really composed. He actually looked a lot more comfortable coming out of defence the ball, I've seen him kind of dribbling out a few times Carter Vickers always impresses me, I think he's a no-nonsense defender, he puts his head in where it hurts, he's no, no afraid to go and attack, crosses that come into the box, Joe Hart, everybody's making a big thing about the, the kind of back heel flick that he done, but what was more impressive is he picked out, I think he picked out ball and goalie a good pass after it so uh, and obviously Bolly come back I, I think a lot of people are making an awful lot about Bolly but I thought he was steady if unspectacular uh, but a good you know it was as I've seen as you know he gets quoted on here a lot and I know he's listening but Maya said that you know it's a long time since they played like that away from home and if that can become the norm and we can go on a run of winning games then that's you know we'll be climbing right back up the league. I definitely as you say Danny there was Two changes from the trip to Pataudry. I saw Neil Beaton and Adam Montgomery drop out. I think Montgomery was a, t- took a knock in training, but Tom Rogic came back in from the start. And as you say, the much spoken about volleyball and golly came in. I just, I don't know. I thought he gave us a bit of balance. And like, I don't think there's much to choose between like our three set, uh, three left back, like Taylor, Montgomery, and uh, Ball and Golly. I know Scales is there as well, but he's barely featured. But out of the ones that have played me in a few games, like I, I, I don't think there's very much between them. I thought Bolly was all right. I'm the same as you. I think, I think it either goes both ways. With Bolly, you've got people who will criticise him and never want to see him in a Celtic shirt again, and then you've got people who I think go out, went a bit over the top yesterday with how well he played and. Like came out as if he was this like had revitalised the team. I, I thought he was like, as you said. I thought he was very steady. And so obviously, Andy, I'll come to you because uh, I know just heard from Danny. So before I get your thoughts on the game, I just just to stay on Bolly for a second. What where does that sort of leave us again? And they choose to because obviously Bolly wasn't registered with a Europa League squad. So is that a concern for you again? And choose to. I mean, it's just got to be. Uh, obviously, he's he played well enough, and he would have merited. If he was registered, he would have merited sort of playing and keeping his place. But it's it's not been done. It's not it's nothing that we can dwell on and, and really sort of put too much thought in it. Um, we can't change it now, and we've just got to obviously use the players we'll have at our disposal. Um, do you know do you know how long Greg Taylor's away? If he obviously been back, I'm pretty sure Taylor's towards the end of November. I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. Uh, what was your thoughts on Bolly yesterday? I know we'll come on to Ferenc Farros game in a bit. What was your thoughts on him and the team in general yesterday? Um, like you said, uh, the game itself was it was obviously we would we'd already won one and away game, which was massive um, against Aberdeen. So obviously there's there's still massive amount of pressure in the game, but I think that's what I, you were, we were only getting into it. 
still worried about that because you knew, obviously, right, that monkey was off the back now. It's just about going away, putting a good performance in, getting the three points, and that's obviously what we've done. Um, I thought the goal, Yota's goal, was brilliant. The ball into him, and then again, takes it with the right, finishes it with the left. Tumble school, the same. I think there's a lot of positives to take away, and it's obviously this is happening with players are coming back into the side. Um, we're getting closer and closer to what you would say is a, a full strength starting 11. Um, and it's a big result, um, obviously, given that um, Rangers had dropped points. So it was it was massive to get that performance in there. Um, go away and, like you say, what we're, we're playing with that, that style at times, um, that Angie's football bring. It was it was all positives for me to take. Um, and again, Ball, he's, he's done himself in absolutely no harm. And it's a position where we're struggling. Um, we obviously all want signings for it. We've had our new right back sort of getting into left back try to cover um, because we've not really had any depth there at all or anybody that's trying to justify keeping the spot but uh, it was it was a good performance done I think that like I say it was part of it we're going to date ARF um, with some terrible decisions but apart from that I think it was it was positive and it's good to see that even obviously Furahashi had a quieter game yesterday but yeah again um, the rest of the, the rest of the team have, they've got goals in them and that's something that's that we really do need, um, because it was we were always sort of worried in case that's that's what happens. You become sort of reliant on one person. They dig you a whole lot of time, and obviously we're starting to see um, Yacht putting the ball in the net. Tumbles um, got a couple of goals as well. It's, it's promising, and I think that's that's only going to get better. And as I said earlier, when the more and more players that start to come back for injuries and various things like that, I think ultimately it's only going to sort of Leave us in a stronger position um, as well. I think Mikey Johnston came off the bench, Jackie Marcus came off the bench. But two players who obviously were, for different reasons, have, have not had any real game time at Celtic so far because injuries and things like that. So, again, it's just further depth to the squad that we've got. And it's good to finally start, start to see a squad forming together with, with positive performances out of the park. I think that's extremely fair. I think the big concern a lot of us had in September when we had a few injuries was the lack of options on the bench. And, like, as you say, Yakimakis came on. I thought he'd done all right. I thought he'd won where he tried to cut it back when he should have maybe went for goal himself. But he'll still be getting to know how we play in this system and should improve in the weeks to come. I know we've got quite a few games coming up again. So he'll be definitely uh, very useful to have. As you say, Mikey Johnston is a player who's had a number of injury problems over the years, so hopefully he can just sort of uh, sort of get back to full fitness and put his injury worries behind him. And even guys that are still looking back, you've got James Forrest, uh, Christopher Julian's back in training finally, which is great to see because I think he'll, I think he'll just suit Andrew's team uh, right down to the ground. I think he's a great passer of the ball and I think he'll, he'll flourish in this team. Uh, Danny, as Sandy mentioned, the he had teams run about Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, uh, Hibernian and even Motherwell. All of them dropped points this weekend and although it's still very early in the season, it's sort of, it, it gets Celtic back on the right track and to put pressure on these sort of teams. I know Celtic play first next week, uh, next week before Rangers, so being able to potentially cut that gap to a point and uh, put a lot of pressure on them uh, this weekend could have been quite significant in terms of that. I definitely. I mean, it felt significant yesterday when Hearts equalised, and it was a good atmosphere of Celtic fans at the game. But it definitely ramped up in the last five minutes because uh, your game was finishing a wee bit later, and the celebrations at the end. It felt really significant. It felt like a big day in the title race, and uh, you just uh, you get moments like that. And I think the most satisfying thing for us is what Angie's team really needed was was to win a routine game like that. You know, we want these games to be the norm. We want to, you know, play and uh, win games like that, you know, every week. So the most pleasing thing was you get, you know, when you win your games, you get, you know, you make your own luck in the league and we got that wee bit of luck with an equaliser. And actually an equaliser was the best thing it could happen to us because Hearts winning would have put them even, you know, would have kept the gap with them. So you as you say, we, we make points on near enough everybody that was above us, apart from the United. It was a good, it was a good weekend, and 
you get the fact you get you get the idea or the impression that Celtic are getting a lot of players back now, and the squad's not as thin as it used to be. And I know Andy picked up on it. I thought Johnson looked lively when he came on. I thought he looked quite sharp, which was good to see to coming back for injury. History shows he's not too far away for his next injury, but hopefully he can put that behind him, get a run of games, because he is very effective when, you know, when he's playing at full floor. A big fan of Mikey Johnson. Uh, Jota is 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 very good as well. I love how he's just come into the team. You know, there seems to be no. As soon as he signed, there they I know Christy left and opened the space up, but Jota's been excellent. Uh, Yaku Marcus, I thought he. When he came on, he, he looked, you know, the one he should have had a shot and he, he kind of cut it back. But, you know, for game time, he'll get a bit of sharpness and we've got more options. The bench doesn't look as terrifying as it used to, you know, three, four weeks ago. So I think, do I think we're there? No, um, no by a long shot. I think Juranovic coming back, don't get me wrong, I, thought, I actually thought Ralston played quite well yesterday. But I just think we at Juranovic at right back, getting him into the team, get him five, six, seven games under him, and we can get, we can get going. I think and and just pretty spot on his assessment. I think so. It's just about us doing our bit each week and see what happens. And we're no, we're no there yet. Of course, we're no. But January, you know, January was everybody's like, oh, January needs to come. We need to sign six, seven players. Well, the way things are going now, you know, we look as if it's us one, two, kind of big away games in a row and. The next three games are vital. If we can take nine points for them, we'll be in a good place going into you know the busy, busy festive period, especially with like Europe and uh, Betfred as well. So it's, things are a wee bit more positive after the last two two games. Aye, and there, as Danny said, we're in a sort of positive mood ever since that. I know we drew against Dundee United and then lost heavily to Bayer Leverkusen, but we've responded well to that, and we now go into the Tuesday afternoon game, which and I know it's a weird time for a Europa League game, and a lot of fans will struggle to get to it, or you're pulling sickies or whatever. But uh, we do face our old foes, Ferenc Faros, on Tuesday afternoon, and what surely is a pivotal game if Celtic are looking to get out of this Europa League group at all. Uh, now, I know we've had some sort of bright sparks in the first two games, but we have been conceding goals on. Like a very frequent basis in the games, and I think oh, I've not obviously Celtic playing at the same time. I've not seen any fair and Faros games, but by all accounts, they've given a good account of themselves as well. So, what is your thoughts going on a Tuesday afternoon, Andy? It's, I mean, it's like any home game, um, for say like at all. I mean, you sure you've got to win home games, and I think it's one of them. It's we've obviously played two games so far in the. Europa League um, against Leverkusen and played better so we've came away with eight points conceded fucking eight goals in that time um, you would think if we really want to sort of qualify and go to the group it's you need to win the game that's, that's a simple reality so it's it's a tough game um, they're obviously in a similar position in the sense that um, I know obviously they lost both their games didn't they concede nearly as many goals as we did um, and obviously we've got experience of playing them when they knocked us out the Champions League before, so it's it'll be a tough game. I, I don't really, I don't really doubt that. I think they'll obviously, but they'll be up for it. They'll fancy themselves, given what's happened previously, and um, given the fact that that we've conceded goals for fun and have looked quite leaky. Um, don't get me wrong, I think our squads were considerably weaker then, given the injuries and things like that. But we're obviously in a better place now than we would have been um, for against the Leverkusen games in the back in the. Real Betis game, so I'm, I'm confident getting into it. Um, I think that that we're starting to sort of play well again, and and we are scoring goals ourselves. Um, I think it's obviously a clean sheet against Motherwell, which is which is massive. Um, because we have been sort of conceding goals for for the majority of games. Um, even the ones we win, it tends to be a sort of scoring both teams score. Um, situation for most weeks against us, but I think that. I'm I'm confident in it, Darn. I think that we've we've got enough in us to, to get through that game. Um and I really just hope we play well. Um it's it's, it's one of the things like it's, players have got to use that as a springboard, like you get a good European performance in after a result in the league, do you know what I mean? And then before you know it, it's um there's there's positivity. Um and again it'll be a chance for 
for players to really sort of nail down their positions in the squad and um, sort of take us forward. But I am I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll hopefully be able to get there. Um, I'm not 100 percent certain to tomorrow if I'll make it to the game, but I'm thinking I'm thinking it'll be a victory. I uh, certainly hope so. I'm in the same situation as you, and I'm sure same as many fans who are still trying to work out arrangements to get to the game. But uh, Danny, have you got any sort of concern, obviously, on Celtic Party European nights? It's underneath the lights and it's usually a uh, great atmosphere, but have you got any sort of concern uh, that that will have a negative impact on us on Tuesday, given that uh, like the game's not sold out yet and, uh, as I said, it is in the middle of the afternoon? There's always concern, though, because, it, you know, when we were younger, it used to be Celtic home in Europe was an automatic win, and you were just wondering who was going to score the goals. Uh, but we've not been great in Europe this year. I actually thought we played, the results haven't been great, I thought we played really well in best. And if we could repeat that performance, we'll, we'll score another three goals, maybe even more, and take a few off uh, for any for us. I thought we, we played really well against Bayer Leverkusen. 4 nothing defeat at home is awful. should never happen, but it just looks... I mean, it looks bad, but then you see, you know, UEFA tweeting about Hedreki's performance and showing highlights here, and you think, well, you know, we did... Some of the chances that we created were really good, and, I mean, the keepers had a world day. Uh, but we need to get back on track. We need to win these two games. The main objective should be... First and foremost, just take four points and finish far off. Knock them out, essentially. So we're at least in the Conference League and because you know Europe is it's important to Celtic. Always has been, and people might turn their nose up at Europa League Conference. But see if we can get into that post Christmas. And some of the teams in that, I mean, I know Spurs are in it and Roma are in it, but there's some beatable teams, and we've no won a knockout tie in fucking 17 years, so, and it'll be 18, so, it'll be 18 before we get at least the sniffier chance again, so, we should be looking to at least get into the Europa Conference Group. Ideally, uh, Leverkusen will take six points half Betis, and if we can take six half finish Faros, then we could look towards the Betis game at home, and thinking, you know, we could maybe get a draw there, I could maybe beat them. And then, you know, hopefully maybe get a draw and Leverkusen will be through and maybe take advantage of it and get a draw there. But it's a big game. I think we'll, we'll do well. I think we'll win. Uh, the way we've been playing recently at home is good. And, you know, not only is that a weird kick-off for... Uh, it's a weird kick-off time for us, but it's also a weird kick-off time for them as well. And I think we think the crowd will be maybe 30,000, 30, 40,000. I don't think they should be too optimistic for a big crowd with the time. It's an absolutely disgusting kick-off time. Absolutely disgusting. And again, fans are second. Fans seem to be second priority in these situations. You'd have thought after, you know, how long we had with Fitbit and how shite it was for everybody that maybe they... I know it's tough with the this COP26 thing and no game's been allowed to play in that, but, you know, surely they could have come up with a better solution than all three on a Tuesday afternoons, but disappointing, but you know, we need to get on with it and hopefully hopefully we can uh, get back on track and I think you know it'd be good good to, to win again and then obviously look towards the week after. I uh, just on what you said about the things, I think it will be weird. I think you'll probably have about forty thousand because I, I don't know, it may be one of ones that it, it may actually get busier the, like the more the game goes on because you've obviously I'm told if obviously people like us who are trying to get from up you have a lot of like students who are at like college, uni or school who try to get there. It's just as you say, I think this is the same UEFA who six months ago were claiming to have saved football by boycotting the uh, Super League and like who who they were maybe the ones saving it for the fans when now as you say you're fucking getting shafted into this ridiculous time slot but as you say, it's the same for both teams. We've just got to turn up. Uh, most of our games will play the weekend at that time, so I don't think it'll affect the players too much in that sort of regard. And I have uh, much what you used to have said. I think we need to, like, I think four points would probably do it, but if you were to come through these two games with six points, as you said, if, if uh, Leverkusen and they hand it out to Betis and take six points off them, then that, that does give you that chance to uh, really go and toe toe with them for that second spot but any sort of football after Christmas in Europe would be 
greatly welcomed by the fans, I'm sure, no matter what the competition is. So, I think we just need to try and get... I know, as much as I'm saying four points, I think you do need three points on Tuesday just to really put the pressure on uh, Ferenc Varos. And I, I think we will. I think we're coming back. The, the team's a bit stronger. Andy, I'll come back to you about what I spoke to you about earlier. Like, how will Celtic line up? And that big question mark that sort of I mentioned earlier is who who will play left back for Celtic on uh, Tuesday? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a strange one. Um, I'm not actually sure. I don't even know whether I might see scales in there, given, like you mentioned, ball goal, obviously can't play, but you would assume it'll be him and Montgomery, and that's really the only options I think we have. Because, um, I mean, the alternative to that would have been Juranovic, um, when obviously Taylor's missing, but again, he's still injured. So I would suggest it with them, but Danny's right, we played really well. We, we played really well, to be honest, against, like, going forward, we were good against Leverkusen, and their keeper did make some outstanding saves. But, um, I think that is sort of being overlooked a wee bit, but the, the score lines can do that at times. Um, and we're playing a team who are obviously not going to be sort of ruthless and clinical as, as Leverkusen, so I, I think going forward, if we play this in the same manner, then I, I fancy it. But I think the team more or less sort of picked itself. Um, I Bar in the left back, I think it'll be the same. The same lineup we've seen against Motherwell. Um, as long as there's no other sort of niggles or injuries anywhere. But it's we've played well in Europe, particularly going forward against two really, really good sides. Um, obviously, we scored quite a few goals against Betis. And then against Leverkusen, they had an outstanding goalkeeping performance. Um, like They deserve to win the game, but we did play really well at times. Um, and we're putting a lot of good phases of play together. And, creating ourselves good chances which Nanadi obviously goes in um, so I, it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and I do think it's, there's going to be goals in the game um, I, I think we probably will concede um, but I, I think if we're going to come away with a 3-1 victory and like I say it'll be a, a similar lineup to, to what we've just seen um, at the weekend but I'm going to think it's a 3-1 victory now Danny, you making any changes to the team that won at Motherwell yesterday? I know, obviously, Bolly will be a, an enforced change, but how are you lining up on Tuesday? I'm Leandy. I don't think I would make too many changes. I think, obviously, Bolly has to come out, but I would play Montgomery if he's fit. If no, I would give skills a, a run out. Uh, I'd rather play him there than... Uh, well, if Juranovic is fit, I think he'd play there, but I'd rather play skills there than, you know, start messing about with maybe centre halves or something. But uh, I wouldn't make too many changes. I keep the same team and then kinda like Saturday if if uh, if all's going well you can bring Beaton on to break the game up. I thought it was a really good substitution by Anne yesterday. Beaton was a perfect sub at the right time. Uh, and then obviously Yakimakis and Johnson got her on it as well. So hopefully something similar on, on Thursday night. I think we'll I think we'll win I think we'll win 3-0, I think we'll score, I think uh, Kyogo goes through a goal in Europe for us and uh, I think Kyogo and he'll get two and I think Tumble will get the other. I am much the same as you, I think it will be pretty much the same team. Ah, we were sounding too harsh on Tumble, he scored a cracking goal yesterday, but I wouldn't be against Beaton coming in and I'm not even a massive fan of Beaton as I've said on here before, but if you do tell me to bring Beaton in and play McGregor and Rogic ahead of them, then I, I wouldn't be against that, but I think it will be pretty much the same lineup. I'm uh, being too much an echo to Danny. I think that I'm the same if I'd play Juranovic if he's fit and if no then you're gonna to have to go with uh, skills. I don't know what the situation with Montgomery is, but obviously he's he's another option as well. So hopefully at least one of them six as you say, like you know what I'd be left in a sort of weird situation where you're playing a uh, another centre-half at left-back, and I, I, I actually think it'll be quite a tough game. I, I think Ferenc Farros will be looking at it the same way we are, that they'll be looking to the one at Celtic Park only what, 14 months ago or whatever it was. Uh, they'll fancy themselves to uh, come here and do the same again, and I think, I think they played well in Germany, and uh, from what I read, as I said, they played well against Betis as well, so I, I think it'll be tough, but I think Celtic will edge it, and I think they'll win 2-1, and I think Yakimakis will come off the bench and get the winner and really endear himself to however many Celtic fans they make it to the game on Tuesday. But aye, we will be back after that game and 
we will have a full review of the Ferenc Faros game and we'll look towards the St Johnson game. But just something we wanted to announce on here, uh, you might have seen it on our Twitter or our Facebook if you follow us on there. We are doing a live podcast, or as it's known, a pubcast in Malone's in Glasgow, uh, up Sucky Hall Lane. It's a great, a great pub. Uh, we've frequented there quite often, and we were looking to work with the guys. Obviously, uh, if you know Tony's done some great events with him uh, with some ex Celtic players in the recent weeks, and they've went, went really well. And they've uh, came to us, and we. We've got a chance to put this on. It's uh, going to be 11 to 1 next Saturday uh, before the St Johnston game, which is, the, which is the 23rd of October. Uh, we'll be there just sort of shooting the shit the same way we do on here, maybe a wee bit unfiltered. Uh, it'll only be available in the pub, it won't be sort of streamed or recorded. So it'd be great to see any of you there if you can make it. There'll be perfect way to get yourself into the mid for the St Johnson game as the Celts look to uh, continue climbing the league table but Andy it's something I'm looking forward to isn't it? I look forward to it um, should be a good good wee event something for people to do before the game obviously um, have a couple of pints, it'll likely be interactive um, we'll obviously be speaking with people there and, um, a bit, probably a bit like the phone-ins to be honest with you um, as you said it'll be sort of unfiltered just Talking straight about the game and obviously predictions and things like that. And I mean, I heard there's going to be rules and bacon getting dished out. So if not for us, then date for us, can I? Aye, so it would be good if, I, if he's turned up because if you just don't eat the rules, then we've got, we're going to have 10. You're going to need to put us in a wheelbarrow and take us to Celtic Park on a Saturday. Uh, but I, Tony will be there. I know he's not been on this episode. He's been out in Ireland uh, with Brian McLeod in a few shows. So he will be back after the Ferenc Faros game and he'll be at Malone's next Saturday as well. So anybody's wanting to talk to Tony, that's your opportunity as well. But no, eh, that'll be us for the night. And we'd just like to thank you for listening. It's been good to be back. I know we've had a few internationals, which is why we've not been on for a few weeks. But it's good to see Celtic back winning and climbing the table. And hopefully we'll be back on Tuesday night with a reaction podcast to Celtic hopefully beating Ferenc Faros and climbing the Europa League table. But cheers. Oh, all the mums got talking in the village store I was three, you were four You look lovely, that's for sure Just something about you Together we went everywhere You scratched my face, I pulled your hair You sent me tumbling down the stairs Just something about you You must have known that I want you I'm 23 or 24 You're still gorgeous, that's for sure Still something about you Now we've done it everywhere You scratch my back, I pull your hair We've even done it on the stairs Still something about you
things happening. Just written on the wall, very sexy line this time. Come on.